Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 18, Daring Done? Also, quick note, if you hear any kind of banging or noises that I can't edit out, I'm currently in a location where they're doing some slight construction in the background. So, this is an interesting episode. I found the message kind of confusing. It's supposed to be about hope, but they also get into blind belief at one point by accident. Hmm. Okay, that totally wasn't the lesson I took from this, even though that's where like half the episode was. But it looks like they're starting to slightly change Daring Do's look, so she's more unique compared to just being a Rainbow Dash recolor, because I noticed for most of the episode, her mane was actually a different style. Well, this was more of her AK yearling form, which is not what we see a whole lot of in the episode she's been in. And even so, it's more unique than her previous AK yearling look. Yeah, it's just, I'm pretty sure they were trying to do the lesson about how it's okay to believe in something, to have hope in something, but they also went into blind belief, which is different than hope. <laughs> yeah, and I kind of was like, oh, this legend's nice, and yes, we should have hope, but that wasn't really where my focus was on. My focus was on, when are you guys going to recognize that idiot in the cape? <laughs> yeah, I noticed him almost immediately because there was one shot where they shot over to a wide shot, and there he was, standing in a cloak. I'm like, I can't remember his name because it's not important because he's that kind of villain. <laughs> yeah, uh... Dr. Caballeron, doctor and what, I would like to know. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, he's the problem. He, he's what's going on, and man, these people are easily swayed. No kidding. And what difference does it make that the Daring Do books are not released in this kingdom? Also, why are they not released in that kingdom? Hello, publishing company? Why, why are you missing out on a market? I think the difference is they don't know there's an author called A.K. Yearling. They just know about the real entity known as Daring Do. That's the difference they were trying to bring up. Yeah, and the rest of Equestria has it the other way. They know of A.K. Yearling and not Daring Do. And going to the legend that they mentioned in the episode, it was a nice legend, and I like how they led up to it very nicely. The entire time they were talking and hinting at the legend, I was like, are these stones going to be some like magical item that when they get near the statue... Something magical will happen to the statue, and that's why Caballeron is trying to gather all of them. Oh, nope, nope, they're just priceless artifacts that you can sell for a good chunk of change. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Glopaz looks like it would be very useful. Glow in the dark stones? Yeah, in a world where you don't necessarily always have electricity, that's very useful. Oh, and another thing about um, the legend is it gives us even more world building. This is a new region. We're getting more information about the background of the region, which is also giving us more information about Equestria as a whole. Mm -hmm. And similar to Campfire Tales, this legend was set in a different style, with the base form storytelling elicting an Egyptian hieroglyphic feel, and then still keeping those stylized period pieces when they went into the full animation. And I like the way the... Sphinx looked. Though, I don't know if Sphinx get angry if you solve their riddles so easily. Because that kind of threw me off on that. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that because that's kind of what Sphinxes do. They have these riddles. And I wasn't expecting that riddle. I thought they'd go back to Gen 1 MLP and use the Gen 1 MLP riddle, which is also the classic Sphinx riddle but it doesn't work as well in the MLP universe because we don't have humans to walk on two legs. So the classic what walks on four legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon, and three legs in the evening. Though I think the riddle about hope is also a classic, but I think the way they phrased it may have been a new version of it. Yeah, it did seem familiar. Also, Cenebula sounded very familiar. I like, kind of want to go back to Gen 1 and see if there was a sorceress named Cenebula. Hmm. Because right now the only sorceress I can think of is Katrina, and she was the one who enslaved all the woolies. But I want to say Cenebula is similar to the sorceress that I talked about before that was stealing the youth from the ponies 
Remember I talked about Heartthrob in Campfire Tales wearing the veil and being old? I want to say her name was something like Snebula, hmm. who was a villain. Hmm. Because she forced a bird to sing and cast the illusions. But enough about the past. Well, that past. Yeah, maybe we should go back and watch Gen 1 sometime. <laughs> Anything other than the introductory episodes is going to be painful because I have very clear memories of a lot of it because I had some of it on official VHS and I've also gone back and rewatched a couple episodes since MLP FIM came out. Hmm. Yeah, so certain things like uh, the episode with Nightshade and the episode with Katrina and some of the very horrible, horrible songs. <laughs> ah, and I haven't been exposed to any of it recently, so I don't have very clear memories at all. But as you said, moving on to the recent past, future, um, <laughs> time travel. To quote a webcomic, I hate time travel. <laughs> yep. So, any particular nitpicks we haven't gone over yet? Well, we kind of skipped the whole beginning of the episode with Rainbow Dash basically being every Harry Potter fan of, what do you mean there aren't going to be any more Harry Potter books? <laughs> I think it was a combination of that and actually being worried for A.K. Earling because she knows that A.K. Earling and Darren Do are the same person, so if that's stopping, that must be stopping, it could actually be something dangerous. That was like 10% of it. 90% of it was no more Daring Do books. Are you sure? Because it seemed like she was more concerned, but then when Pinky actually bought up the book point, she was like, oh, yeah, um, that too. <laughs> to me, it felt entirely opposite. No, she can't possibly be retiring, and... A lot of it being about the books and less about her friend being okay. But Rainbow Dash is the element of loyalty. That was there too. So it may just be my perspective. Because if I was really enjoying an author and they announced the retirement, I might get a little... But, but, but books! More, more books. I want to read books. I also don't think authors really retire tire that much. I know some authors are still writing into their 90s. Basically everyone I can really think of that are famous ones basically wrote until they couldn't write anymore, which means that pine box looks very comfortable. Yeah, something like that. But with her books being based entirely on her adventures as her alter ego daring do, it's just kind of a whole convenient setup. Also, going back to the beginning, the facial animations, once again, are awesome. They are just doing so much better with animations overall. I'm like, wow. It's mostly little things that you normally don't really pick up on, but it's so much better than the previous seasons that your brain kind of goes, whoa. <laughs> Especially since we, as we said before in a couple of podcasts, uh, we recently watched some of the older episodes and we're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, huge huge upgrades and just all the little details and going back to nitpicking i don't remember there being a pegasus in caballeron's gang so how does he know the magic in the pyramid against flying still works because rainbow dash had her wings tied hmm maybe he um knew about it because he actually apparently is a smart enough villain to be able to be an well, at least, at least he's smart enough about archaeology that he knows what's valuable or not. So he probably was able to re read inscriptions on the walls and stuff like that and see that Pegasuses, or Pegasi, however the plural on that one works, are prohibited from flying in there. But that still brings up another point. The Sphinx is also a winged creature, and the Sphinx left the pyramid by flying. So if this whole thing made the pyramid a no-fly zone... It had to be specifically to Pegasi because the Sphinx was still able to leave. Yeah, I was thinking about that too as I was watching that scene. I'm pretty sure the Sphinx basically made it a no-fly zone for Pegasus. The question is, does it also work on alicorns? That would be an interesting thing to find out. I doubt we're going to find out, but it would be interesting. So anything you particularly really liked about this episode? That we got another legend. 
and that Daring Do slash AK Yearling had such a good lesson at the end that even though you intend to do good, bad things can still happen and you need to take responsibility for that. Hmm. Yeah, they actually put a couple of lessons in here. The one about hope, the one they accidentally put in there, the one about blind faith in something. And that one too, I was going to actually ask you, which lesson did you pick up on? Yeah, to me, that was basically the lesson because Daring Do did do all those things. She did knock over the apple cart. She did destroy the statue. She did run off without paying. They were all side effects of taking care of a larger good, but she still caused harm. So from now on, she's going to be coming back after she saved the world and go, sorry, sorry, my sorry, sorry, my bad, my bad, sorry, here's, here, here you go, here's a new cart. But that one was passed down through my family. Yes, because the whole actions have consequences, and you need to take responsibility for the consequences of your actions. It struck me as very Incredibles in the early part of the movie where everyone started suing the superheroes. Ah, Though, I gotta say, that guy who sued Mr. Incredible for saving his life, I don't know if that would actually hold up in court. Especially since suicide is considered a problem in most states. Uh, suicide is actually illegal, so Mr. Incredible stopped the person from committing a crime. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we should talk about the Incredible sometime. Maybe not. <laughs> so anything else we want to go over about this episode? The Glopaz is nice. Uh, the elderly pony that Rainbow Dash talked to sounded a lot like Grand Pear to me. Hmm, could be the same voice actor. Mm-hmm. Also, it's nice that we're having more episodes where we're not even necessarily seeing all of the main six, even like in the background. And I like Pinkie Pie with the newspaper at the beginning, you know, all the different headlines mm. and Rainbow Dash's reaction of, Ugh, another hyped up Paris Sprite story. You know, a little bit of news commentary. Mm -hmm. I do like how we find out a little bit about the world just by the news headlines. Especially the um, part about, oh, politics. And how I was like, oh, I didn't know you were in politics. I'm like, oh, politics really are a thing in this world. Yes, and apparently there are elections and everything. Because so far, all of the authority figures we've seen have either already been in power or ascended to power by overthrowing someone evil. We haven't exactly seen any elections. Mm. Oh, we haven't even touched on how those puffs of, I'm assuming steam, let them cross. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. If it's actually steam, that would be very hot and it would hurt. And if it's not steam, what is it? Yeah, that brought up another thing that I actually was thinking while I was watching the episode. You know, because blind leap of faith and all that other stuff and hope that it's there. I just remembered that it would have been so much better if the bridge was still there, just invisible. <laughs> or that trick they used in the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade where the bridge just blends into the background. You can't actually see it, but it's actually there. But the moment you step on it, your perspective changes and you actually see the bridge. I was expecting that, not puffs of smoke or steam. Both would have been very interesting. And also going back to the legend, because now we're talking about the bridge portion... It wasn't that great of a leap of faith for Cinebula to walk the bridge blindfolded because the prince was right there and could call out directions to her and he had no reason to lead her wrong. So he was there to be her eyes and had no ulterior motives. That was another scene where I was like, this is not going quite the way I expected. Though I'm thinking, hmm, it's an okay idea. But I would have liked the invisible bridge more because that would really be a leap of faith. Oh. There's something here. Jump and then, oh, there is something here. Well, that's just me. I think that would have worked better. Thank you for bringing it up. I had completely forgotten about that scene. No, that was basically them walking into the legend because Rainbow Dash was tied up exactly where the prince was and they had to get to her and, hmm, problems. It's also convenient how this ancient structure has stood for how long, but now that Rainbow Dash is tied to it, it's going to sink into the slime. Well, maybe Caballaron did something to trigger an event or something that caused all of this to suddenly start activating, falling apart, so on and so forth. Entirely possible. Also, I didn't expect Caballaron to reveal himself so quickly in the earlier part of the episode. I expected him to be like, sneaking on the entire time. Then right at the end, when Staring Dew is completely thrashed and he's got all the stuff, this is who I am, and then they trick him into revealing himself to the crowd. 
Well, I was just mainly bothered that she didn't recognize him. And by she, I mean Daring Do slash AK Yearling. We see in the earliest iterations of Daring Do that she is highly intelligent. And she's been going up against Cabalaron for how long? She didn't recognize his voice. She wasn't at all put off by the fact that this was the only pony whose face is hidden. That he keeps tripping over his words and saying things incorrectly. Which well, he didn't actually do much in the beginning of the episode. It was only later in the episode where he started saying, I, uh, yours, I mean mine, I mean ours. Yeah, and I wasn't really expecting Cabalaron to reveal himself to Rainbow Dash right then either. Because it's like, what was the point? They were ready to leave town and give up, so wasn't it kind of all over? But we still had episode left. Yeah. So, like, dude, um, you kind of, like, revealed yourself a bit earlier there. You probably would have won if you would have just waited five minutes, but you had to do the classic villain gloat. <laughs> okay, shall we wrap things up with our final thoughts on the episode? Mm-hmm. Well, I liked the adventure aspect of it for a while. I was like, is there actually going to be a lesson in this episode? <laughs> and then, oh, there's, once again, multiple lessons. Some of them hidden, some of them I think were accidental, but all good. And I really liked the legend. I really liked the newspaper because both of those were really smart ways of doing world building without actually really shoving it in your face. <laughs> A very enjoyable episode. Pinkie Pie wasn't anywhere near the annoying levels. She was more of the actual Pinkie Pie. <laughs> Though I would like to know how she knew that those muffins were free, and I hope they were free. <laughs> Overall, I really enjoyed the episode, and can't wait for Mohar. I enjoyed the episode, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, because as soon as I saw the title, I was like, another Daring Do episode. There are so many ways this could go. And I enjoyed the legend and the newspaper for the world building. Um, to me, the lesson of repercussions for actions came in early on, basically as soon as A.K. Yearling was sharing the Daring Do did all this terrible stuff. I'm like, hmm, yeah, adventuring has consequences. You know, there's kind of the cleanup afterwards and stuff. So to me... I guess that was why that was the lesson I was more focused on, because to me it was brought up very early in the episode, and then they just kind mm. of framed it at the end. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 7, Episode 18, Daring Done? Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, comment, share, watch other videos, all the usual YouTube, social media, struggling artist requests. If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on Tumblr, Twitter, DeviantArt, Facebook, Google+, and a couple of Mastodon servers. Really like Lux's art and would like to get some of your own? Check his commission page for pricing and availability. Have a few bits to throw our way? Uh, we have a Patreon and Ko-fi page for donations. Patreon starts at a dollar. Kofi works in increments of three. Thank you for your consideration, and thanks again for listening.